Why was it not possible to come to an agreement with the unions regarding staff transfer? Uh, because in the end, the unions, um, well, we did actually reach a point where effectively we had reached agreement with the unions. Uh, and then they when came was back that, to the Secretary of State? Uh, about three or four weeks ago. And then they came back at the last minute <coughs> with a series of demands that were uh, wholly unrealistic. They wanted, for example, a, a redundancy package that was there in perpetuity. Um, and um, if I remember rightly, and you know, they took us to a point where we couldn't agree. Now, I think we produced a pretty generous voluntary redundancy package for staff, uh, much more generous than exists in the current arrangements for probation trusts. It was a disappointment, but um, uh, you can only deal with the world as it is. Yeah. For the record, on the 20th of November, the Unions Probation Association and the MOJ were unable to reach an agreement, as you've said. But, uh, what is said to me, and I accept it, was on the last available day for negotiation, new information was uh, presented by a senior MOJ official, which would have caused significant detriment to members. This prevented the NNC from actually debating the substantive framework agreement which was on the table. Would you like to comment on that? It's slightly different from what you just said. I think that, that, that is different to our understanding mm, yeah. and I think it's probably worth making the point that this is a process of negotiation that's taken an extremely long time and on several occasions we extended that period of time for negotiation because we thought it was important to do everything we possibly could to reach an agreement and of course it would have been better to reach an agreement but it simply wasn't possible. We did reach agreement across a whole range of different subjects but we didn't reach final agreement, and that, as the Secretary of State has explained, has had consequences. I but don't recognise this, this length of time that you're talking about. This whole thing has been rushed through anyway. Well, well it hasn't been, been a long time from the very it, beginning, we, of, from, we, from the genesis of these ideas. We began the negotiations with the unions, I think, in June, if I remember rightly, possibly even as early as May. They continued till November. That well, doesn't seem to me like a rushed negotiation. That's not a great deal of time when people's futures are, are, are in the balance. Well, let's be clear. That, that's a negotiation about the process for transferring members of staff either to the NPS or the CRC. That's yes. a six-month negotiation on yeah. that issue. Yeah. How long do you think it should have taken? Well, it's not for me to say, but what I do know is you're rushing this through and it's going to fail. Now, uh, are you in a position to meet with uh, the unions yourselves? Are you prepared to, even at this length hour? Well, we've said very clearly to the unions that there is a... I mean, I would be delighted if the unions wanted to come back and accept the redundancy package for their members. Um, but I ask you the question. You say that the, the department's produced new stuff <coughs> in the last, last day. Can you tell us what that was? It's 20th of November. Uh, can you tell us what that's... Oh, I what, 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 questions, yeah. uh, it was... Um, uh, it was a... a Significant detriment member. Well, it's on the record what, the 20th what, November. What we can it? find out. Okay. We can find well, out. We have, we have no knowledge of producing some material new information. Yeah. Yeah. You've just said that we did, but do you know what it was? Well, with respect, if you met the unions, they would tell you direct. I'm not speaking for the unions. I'm trying to evaluate where we are currently. If you were prepared to meet them, they would tell you directly. <coughs> People who were in that meeting, you weren't there, I wasn't there. You'd like to know? Ask them. Well, we've had extensive discussions with the unions, both as ministers and officials over the months, but you've just produced something, um, but you don't appear to know what it was. Well, no, because you've been, uh, you've been told about this. Letters have gone to the MOJ about this breakdown on the 20th of November. It's not new. Uh, Mr Thurid, I, 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 we, we have done as much as we can to reach agreement. We, we've reached a package which I think is pretty generous. Um, I know that many of those involved in the negotiations would like to have concluded an agreement on the basis of what we've offered. I think it's a very strange position to be in where we've made a very generous offer of voluntary redundancy to employees and there will be some changes. Uh, there would have been even if we weren't going ahead with these reforms um, because of the need to streamline back office operations. We're in a very strange position where it is not possible for us to offer more generous redundancy terms to people who will probably lose their jobs <coughs> anyway because the unions are stopping us from doing so. Well, can I ask you finally, and again I'll repeat the question, would you be prepared to meet with the unions to discuss these outstanding <coughs> issues now, one final time? We've said that our doors will remain open to the unions right the way through the next few months, and I hope they will uh, decide in the end okay. that the, the, the voluntary redundancy offer on uh, available to their members is one they can accept, because it's a very strange position where they don't want to Would you be it. willing to halt the reassignment process until we, as a committee, have reported on this subject? We plan to do so in January. Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Can I, can I, I don't know if it's yeah. Just make the point that 
with or without the final agreement on all points which we were seeking, it's probably worth <laughs> highlighting that in terms of the transfer of staff that will take place on the 1st of April, that will happen on their existing terms and conditions. It will have no effect on their pension <coughs> entitlements and there will be no compulsory redundancy. So everybody will have a place, one side of the line or the other. I just thought it was worth making that point because I wouldn't want the impression to be given that agreement hasn't been reached and therefore there are no settlement terms available to staff which they might find acceptable. We have tried to present that as a fair package for staff even though we've not been able to get agreement <coughs> across all issues. I think it would be totally unfair, Mr. Lewis, to start now a halt to reassignment process that's well underway, creating extra uncertainty for staff. What I want to do is to move as quickly as possible to what is initially only an internal <coughs> reorganisation so that people have certainty about what job they're doing uh, and what their role is going to be over the next year. Um, so I think it would be uh, my, my keenness to move on quickly with the people assignment, as requested by many trust chiefs, um, it is to ensure that people have certainty about their roles. And I think it would be unfair on staff to suddenly say, well, look, we'll, we'll call a halt and we'll delay things, um, when many of them have already been told where they're likely to be assigned to. In terms of certainty, do you anticipate any redundancies in the process? Um, it is inevitable that over the, the next... Uh, it is inevitable that um, over the next uh, year or two that there will be some redundancies, particularly in support staff areas. <coughs> Um, that is why we are seeking to put in place a very generous voluntary redundancy scheme, redundancy scheme that offers better